think it's time to blow this scene. Get everybody and the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. jam. Sorry. Okay. So, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are back at it again. And we are officially ending the first half of the Cowboy Bebop franchise. This is Jupiter Jazz Part 2, Season 1, Episode 13. can't believe we're already 13 episodes in on this bitch. All right. Yeah. What? Yes. You almost went John Tron there for a second. Like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> I almost went Chad Bartlett surprise. <laughs> you did go Chad Bartlett surprise. <laughs> I did? There you go. Now that's Chad Bartlett surprise. That sounds like a uh, that sounds like a dumb cooking uh, like kinda, a cooking recipe. It's kind of disappointing, isn't it? Because it's like there's only half the show left. Oh, I thought you were just talking about me in general. No, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's Jesus, surprise. Chad. It's kind of disappointing. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jesus, Chad. Jesus, Chad, the one who bears the cross. <laughs> God, hey. praise be unto Chad. I went oh, nine. that's a bad way. Bro. There's a lot of people Holy on this channel that nine. believe that Micah is Jesus. Oh, They're going to be very cold. disappointed about this. Look, if Jesus is me, I'm disappointed. <laughs> okay? Fair enough. Oh, it's not me. Better Micah than me. <laughs> Better him bro, than me. Bro, let's be real. I have male pattern baldness. Micah <laughs> has male pattern awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, his hair is Luxurious. sexual chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Anyway, <laughs> we were talking about he, Cowboy you know, Bebop. Every time he does that hair thing, you know what I'm going to do? What? Whenever he does the hair flip thing in the beginning of the episode, whenever I put that back up there. You're going to clip that and put no, Chad no, saying I'm his hair to, is sexual I'm chocolate. Put Mark over Henry's it. sexual chocolate. Yes. <laughs> That's going to yes. be hilarious. Like, and he's just like, he's like, I'm going to give it all to you. Yeah. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> it's, like, it's like shitty Barry White, but still Barry White enough to be cool. Amazing. You, yeah. should, you should clip it up with like several things and have that and then like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like from Day the Ferris bow, We should have a whole yeah. episode of us Day bow, talking bow. about that clip. <laughs> I would be down for You know, Day Bow Bow. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get to the episode. This is Jupiter Jazz Part Two. Christ Almighty, we we are we are a little drunk and a little uh, and a little sauced. At this Hopefully, point. you'll do that like before this episode, and you can put that intro on this episode so everybody will be able to hear you talking about the intro that just yeah. played. <laughs> God, that, we'll probably have to try that. All right. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is a uh, Jupiter Jazz Part Two. Let's see how this ends. That don't look good. I was in the same squadron as Vicious on Titan. You said that you didn't need comrades. It was ripped. But I'm attracted to that word. Mm. He ripped Vicious out of the pictures. The war on Titan. Well, some would say the attack on Titan. Da -da 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 That's prophetic. The music box is big on this show. Nice melody. There was one earlier too, right? Oh, that same one, right? You mind if it's I like I said, I love music box things. It's just haunting. It is. That's why my ringtone is the music box from Bloodborne. Oh, that's right. <gasps> nice. Good shit. This is pre-bird. Before he had the bird. <laughs> so he's got to be more savage now. He's got a bird. That's right. Much more. So they gave me some new drug they were testing on prisoners. It was highly addictive. And the side effects, well, my hormones went out of bounds. And this is what happened. Since I came here, there's been one other person who knew about Vicious. He'll murder you. Death does not frighten me. You're lying. Either way, I don't have long to live. You just help someone selfishly and you take them home. And then you go off to die. Mm -mm. It's been six months since I saw one in the flesh. And 
two years since I saw a girl that good looking. Trust me, I wouldn't make a mistake about that. Man, I sure wouldn't want to live around here. <laughs> I think he made sure not to put her chair up there just because he wanted to like lay his face down on it where her <laughs> ass was so he'd just be like <sighs> <laughs> Probably so. Pull the Jesse like pull the Jesse Miles like <laughs> noise like the like the like the uh... <laughs> I just wonder why that chair was always just sitting there. That man. was my thought too, I'll be I'm honest. I'm just wondering why the chair is sitting there by itself. There's like no reason why it's there other than the fact that that man wanted to perm on it a little bit and be like, her ass was just sitting right here. <sighs> He's probably going to cut the leather off the top of that and mount it on his wall and be like, be like, yeah, the finest ass I... Ladies I... and gentlemen, the saga continues. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm fucking around at this point. Sorry. Side plot. Julia. About two years ago, she wandered in out of the blue. A month later, she disappeared. I'm just watching a dream that I never wake up from. It's like I'm watching a dream. Be careful when you're with that woman. Women are all liars. You should know. She said it. Huh, you're finally up. You've been sleeping for three days. Your eyes are different colors. My left eye is in the past. And? What about your right? <laughs> I, I do not meant blame that. him at all. Bullet hell or not? Tranquilizer the guns, they're mocking me. I don't know about an ass somebody else. Hey, come on. Forget it. I don't want anything to do with foreigners ever again. <laughs> Looking for a blue apartment building. Blue apartment building. Huh. Go figure. <clears throat> Booty. Oh. He made sure to use his metal arm. Mm-hmm. Um. He's one of those kind of guys, huh? <laughs> what are you talking about? Damn. You mean Grin? He's not like anyone else. Grin again. Work, which becomes a new genre itself, will be called Cowboy Bebop. It's a bold statement. And they're right. See how it plays out. They're right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to do, Ed? Is it here? I don't trust this. Mm. Sneaky. It's a big lady. Oh shit. Ooh, betrayal. I've got a spaceship. It's you. When you gave me that music box, box. you didn't think I'd ever break it open to look inside. Why would I? So you found a solo transmitter. You found it. The moment, the moment she heard it was a gift, gift from you, she told me to open it up and look. There's no need to believe. Ah, uh, stupid kid. <laughs> there is nothing in this world to believe in. Old motherfucker. Where's his bird at?
What was the symbolism in that infinity symbol? The ever, the ever evolving conflict. You're in the way. played ah you made it back to the ship Still tripping. <laughs> Once again, scenery and the music just telling a perfect story. And some people say, oh, well, it's not the entire show that feels this way, but that's the point. It's not supposed to. Mm. It's it not all, not every moment in this can feel like that. Wow. It's impossible. Super cool. I know, right? From just, what blurred vision I saw it through. Yeah, I don't know what I it is, man. My allergies kick into high gear, and my eyes get all... They get all hazy and everything? It's like gunky. I don't even know how to explain it. Also, I don't know if this is a real thing. Sound supervisor. Les Claypool. <laughs> I don't know Whoa. if that's a real thing. I don't that's know if that's a real cool. thing. I didn't notice that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good find, dude. It's gotta be a real thing. It's listed in the credits. <laughs> that's super cool. I okay, hold on, hold on. Let's see. It was uh, a very chill vibe, that whole outro. I wanted you to play it again because I was just like It's crazy because you see like this space right? scene at the end with like this meteor filled asteroid belt, you know, and the planets and everything. You don't normally picture Something set in space to be anything like this. Yeah, no, it was and really it's just chill. crazy. It kind of reminded me of Enya, or maybe like <laughs> some kind of really chill trance music. It was, but even like story wise and just series wise, like you don't expect something set in space to really be like this. No, so it's just, if I like so that, that's probably my it. favorite outro of the whole series. Well, yeah, I mean, you haven't to seen this the point. other outro yet. Well, yeah, you <laughs> haven't seen really any end credits. Yeah. Yet. yeah. So, yeah, the uh, we'll let you hear the other like the other theme and plus the final theme 
Which, so this is the only other one that's different? No, there's one the, more. The final episode. The very is final episode. As well. But like wow. the main so this theme, is actually like, something special. The this. main yes. outro actually has like a special place in my heart for like multiple reasons. Which one? The, the main outro. Oh, the main outro? Yeah, yeah. Real, uh, folk uh, Real Folk Blues. Yeah, I that. really enjoyed this one, though. I thought it was cool. Yeah, this this one, that's why the Jupiter Jazz duo, they're probably two of my favorite episodes. I, I see them as one episode. Yeah, you know, and if I had a top ten list, I would count this, you know, both these episodes as one episode. Mm-hmm. I know that's cheating in some people's books, but I don't give a shit. But I agree. It's really it's the same continual story across two episode lengths. So. Yeah, and it's meant to be consumed as two episodes, but yet they're all they're both connected, and they uh, this is the first that isn't an an anthological thing. It's, I couldn't hate you for it. Yeah, so. I I overall see this and I just can't help but just get overwhelmed because I sometimes listen to this music whenever I'm on a drive to put me in a to like put me in a better state because I imagine like I don't know sometimes I imagine like some of the bad stuff that's happened but also some of the good that has come out of the bad like for instance my my dad being happy again like my dad for the for the years after he was divorced from my mom was so unhappy he was so unhappy and just like always angry all the time and then he found he he got married again and he's happy again and i'm and it was and i just think about you know all the things that i've done that's been terrible like me having to like me uh, uh like all the times i've done <clears throat> bad stuff i can't really go into full detail cuz uh, take way too damn long, but let's just say I'm not a perfect person. And thinking back on all of it and reflecting, with this song playing, it makes me realize that life is not meant, you're not supposed to be holding by your mistakes. The only person that can really hold you back because of your mistakes is yourself. I mean, of course, society may look at you and deride you for a little while and just be like, you shouldn't have done that, you should have done this, you should have done that. But the only person that can really do something about it is you. And th- I think about that a lot whenever I hear this song, and it's just like, it, it, I'm not going to say it sums up my whole life, but it does sum up a big part of it that just, I, I, I recall every now and again, and it just, it just puts me in a good state. It's an emotionally rich tone. It is. Very emotionally rich. And that's why I love this damn soundtrack, man, because it's full of just countless songs. That just hit something. Mm, yeah. It hits. That's the power of music. That's the power. Well, and not only. Well, it's the music. Like I said, music's one thing, but everything that's molded together and encapsulates. Into when you can attribute your own shit to music, it's really special. Yes, it is. Because I know that there have been points in my life where having music to relate to has been like really, really fucking important to me. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. So basically, it's it's not necessarily that it was the version within this, but the other outro, the real folk blues, there's a version that someone wrote uh, their own English lyrics for. It's not a direct translation. It's what they made for it. And it's kind of a song about... They, they made it about, like, loss and, like, how to walk away from loss and getting over it. And, like, during, like, one of the darkest times of my life, like, I listened to that, and it actually kind of gave me, like, the willpower and... um just the mentality to move past it and actually attribute it to like, you know, well, this is, you know, this is not supposed to be my problem anymore. So I'm not going to let it be my problem anymore. Like I'm going to move on to the next thing and there's no reason for me to basically, you know, ruin my own life over dwelling on this essentially. And like, so that was like a, a point where like that song was like the key factor and like making me realize like a way that I needed to think about something that otherwise was going to basically like ruin my life. And actually like I, I'm still feeling some mistakes like from that point in my life because I made some bad mistakes before like I listened to that song and changed my mentality on it. So like but yeah that song's something that I really fucking love from this as well and that particular version of that song. And I will let you guys hear that after you have seen that later on as well if you want to for sure so i yeah i'm i'm just glad that you all were here to witness that with us and uh you know just the overall feel no, of this episode no that was dope dude it's the reason why i got you played again it was sick yeah, i yeah. liked it 
And <clears throat> honestly, I'm 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 still flabbergasted that we're halfway through this series already, man. This has been fun. It's mm-hmm. been a boatload of fun. Yeah, watching this. I've with enjoyed y'all. watching it. It's cool shit. Oh yeah. You know the ship that Spike rides around in the red joint. Yeah, yeah that the reminds fish. me of that PS One game that you really like. Iron Hunter. It looks like it with the gun that comes out. And yeah, everything. a little bit. Cause like, yeah, it drops like, down and drops yeah. moves around. A little yeah. bit. What do you think? A little bit, yeah. Well, well, yeah. The swordfish spikes main main uh, get up. It's there's there's a lot of history to it, and there's actually an episode where they actually go more in depth with it. And uh, trust me when I say, man, it it that's a great episode too. Also, I just want to say I've never seen animation and just I guess choreography wise like. Um, ship or plane battles done quite the way they were done in this. Yeah, they feel ridiculously intense while at the same point, at the same time, like ridiculously realistic and like, like the, you can feel the fact that they're still piloting machines and they're not doing like you know out of this world shit like you see in some other like you know Ace Combat and like uh, well not necessarily Ace Combat but you know like other like fighter pilot stuff and just. Things well, where the planes are going, ooh, you know, doing things that you're like, I, oh, they're moving so fast, they would pass out if they moved that fast. You know, I think like that. one thing that it's attributes crazy that to this, that really gets this, is the, um, well, I think uh, Watanabe, what he effectively does in every single one of his anime, he sets the rules of the physics. Mm. And if the laws of physics get broken in some way, then then he doesn't go through with it. Yeah. Because, you know, he could have made Spike's shit be able to have, like, perfect maneuvering and all this and all that, but then we go, when you go back to You feel like the heaviness and, like, the real... The weight of... Like, yeah, weight of those machines somehow from the animation and everything. Like, I really appreciate that about it. from episode three, remember when Spike was in the the Stargate and he had to turn around in order to Mm. chase down the missiles? Um, he, you know, you actually see, like, it's not a perfectly maneuverable ship, but it's got, it's got a lot of zip to it, but maneuverability is an issue, hmm. especially in, especially when having to turn and do a full 180, whereas FaZe did it easily. You see, it, there's different, you know, each ship has its own different advantage, and I, I honestly, I, looking at, looking at it and just knowing the, the breakdown of the physics and everything of, I think that's very Not cool compared works. to like other series like in Star Wars where like all of the X Wings and TIE Fighters feel like they're on really equal ground and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. As Extreme opposed to like they're being like. Shit. But yeah. it's just yeah. the technology of the situation, you know? Yeah. They have the benefit of supreme technology in that. And if, I guess in this fan, you know, or not fan, but universe. Like universe, this fandom. They have only the ability to do so much. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's humans, but 50 plus years into the future. Just after... like we were talking about John Wick, though, limiting factors to characters and their situations make it more relatable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I find my relatability with a lot with some of these characters. I mean, there's some stuff I, I see with Jet. There's some stuff I see with Spike. Heck, there's even some stuff I see with Faye. I mean, it's it's weird how relatable some characters can be, and you look at them in their moments of weakness or their moments where they're not at their best, and you're just and at first you're just like, oh come on, why would you? Wait, I'd do something like that. Yeah, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, the investment is really cool to have. Yes, it is. It's very very nice to have. Uh all right. Well, I know uh, I know that y'all are probably tired of us talking because honestly, it is. God, Jesus, it is it's very late, late in the morning. Us. So, um, anyway, we're going to end it here. This was Cowboy Bebop, season one, or uh, episode 13, Jupiter Jazz, part two. We hope you all enjoyed it. Oh, by the way, Les Claypool is not the Les Claypool we think it is. Oh, oh really? Yeah, I know. Damn. Depressing. I know. Sad. But, uh, if you all want to watch the full version of this, link is in the description down below to our Patreon. If you're watching <clears> this on YouTube and you enjoyed this, uh, feel free to leave a like. Also, if you want to see more from us, we have a subscribe button right there. 
and a little bell, ring it, and uh, you'll be able to be informed every time we release a new I found uh, out, too, if you're on your phone, if you click the bell again, it gives you an option, and it's giving you personalized notifications. You can set it to get all of them if you want to. Yeah. So if absolutely. you want to know when I'm on there playing live stream video games or Nate gets on there playing live stream video games. He does it all. Or if I manage to get this man to play Persona 4 and stuff like that, like I want him to. Or 3. Then you'll you'll get a notification, hopefully, if oh, YouTube yeah. actually cooperates and sends it out like it's supposed to. Definitely not one or two. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for tuning in. And until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. Andrew. I'm Nick. I'm Chad. And we will see you all in the next one. Peace out.